Now, I, I can see COVID de de devastating and decimating the world, non-believers, but the body of Yeshua, the people of Yahweh, were devastated and decimated by this thing called COVID. And, 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 and they threw it away. They threw the scripture away. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together the way some do. That was still in the Bible during COVID. That, 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 no, God didn't take that out of the Bible because COVID showed up. And, and, and people listened to the government. They listened to other non-believers. They listened to other untaught believers. And they stopped assembling themselves. Even when the government gave them permission. I ain't going back. See, it got comfortable with not coming. Whenever you get comfortable with something, whenever you get used to something, it's easy to stay that way. And, and got decimated and fearful with something called COVID. Do you not know that your father has kept you from some things that you were not aware of? He kept you and I safe in some situations that we weren't even aware of. And he couldn't keep me safe during this time. And, and I let the government tell me that this was non-essential. Before this happened, this was essential to a lot of people. Essential. I'm not missing the word. Oh, it's so good. Oh, the word fills me. It helps me. It blesses me. It encourages me. I'm not missing that. People were here all the time. They weren't missing. But when that showed up, when the excuse showed up, that it's okay. It's non-essential. People fell off, and they still fall lean. God still love them. Pastors still love them. I'm talking about, I ain't talking about just here. Everywhere. Everywhere. Just fell off. Just quit. Gave up. Gave in to something called COVID. And agreed with the world. Uh, when you agree with the world, you become an enemy to him. Knowingly or unknowingly. And, and saw this as non-essential to them when it was essential to them in the past. How could it be non-essential when it was so essential to me prior to this? So, so if you've fallen down, get back up. If you've given up, get back in the race. Do not allow fear to dictate anything in your life. If, if fear gets a stronghold in any area of your life, it's not going to just stop there. If we know Yahweh has not given us a spirit of fear, and if we know fear is a spirit, why would I yield to it in anything? Because if Satan could scare you, he can own you. Whatever you are afraid of, you will avoid. All things work together for good. See, even this is going to work together for his good. He's going he's to see to it. You lost a job and he still worked things together. You lost a house, he still worked things together for your good. You lost a marriage and he still worked things together for your good. People ain't talking to you anymore and he still. People think they hurt you. People think they're hurting you by not talking to you anymore. Really, when some, certain people stop talking to you, you just got blessed. You know, so, some people are like clouds. Once they leave, the day just got brighter. <laughs> don't think, don't let people think, or don't you think that people own you? People own your happiness, they own your joy, they own your prosperity, they own your victory. Don't let people think they own that. Don't you think people own that? Don't you allow to let people think they own that in you? Trust in, the, trust in Yahweh with all your heart. Lean down on your understanding. All your ways acknowledge him. You ain't got to acknowledge them. Acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. So we, we know we're getting back. We're back. People are being strengthened, I hope. And it's just so disheartening and so, discern, so, discern, so uh, discerning that, that people have fallen away and fallen off and, and, have, have, and have, have viewing this in a different light than they never viewed it before. And it's really sad and disheartening. And people that you would think that were strong in the word, strong in the Lord and the power of his mind, quote you scriptures all day long. Pray real loud. Oh, they pray, oh, they, they pray loud and shout loud and all that stuff loud. And soon as fear and danger show up, you know, that's like you being in the hood. I grew up in San Bernardino. You know, you get into, a, get into a squirmish or a scuffle, and, you know, you got your, your people with you. You know, you, you find out who the, they got a word, the real ones. See, some act like real ones, some talk like real ones, and when they go down and the real ones stay and the other ones, they don't. And so the enemy showed up 
and people that you thought that appeared to be real ones, they fled. But God still loves them, and so do we. We just pray for them to get back on track. Get back on track. Amen? Amen. All right, then. Praise God. Um, we'll be doing communion next Sunday, so come pre prepared for that. And we're still doing our Wednesday morning Bible study, and you know we're on this heavy subject here, the tribe of Judah, something we never heard before, something we haven't been taught before. We're looking at scriptures and, and words that we didn't understand before. We just ignored. And so it's kind of heavy treading, heavy plowing, but it's still the truth. I want you to stick with it. And, 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 and yes, pastor still believes in Yeshua, as you know, better known as Jesus in English. Uh, we washed in the blood. We still believe in the Holy Spirit. We still believe in prayer. We still believe in fasting. Still believe in communion. Still believe in all the basic stuff that if you've been in this any amount of time, all that's settled. But then we move to something a little heavy, something different. Um, don't get turned off. Don't be afraid of it just because you never heard it before. Open your heart up to it and receive. Amen? Amen. And let's grow. Say, I want to grow. I want to grow. See, I ought to be tired of milk. You know, milk, 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 bottle, milk. No, let's, there's some other good stuff out there. There's some other good stuff. There's some meat in here. And let's get away from the milk. You know, pastor, just keep making me feel good. My job ain't to make you feel good. If you don't come in there feeling good, I hope the Holy Spirit can get you in a good mood because that's not my job to get you in a good mood. Now, giving you the word will, you know, that'll bless you and help you. But I'm not here to entertain you, make you feel good. I'm not here to say stuff that you want to hear and that you like. Amen. Hope you like it. Hope, you know, whatever. But if it's the word which is going to be, then it's your choice. It's your decision. I, would, I didn't write this. I wasn't around when this went down. I'm ex my job is to explain it. He said he gave gifts unto men. Prophets, evangelists, pastor teachers. I'm a pastor teacher. Pastors are supposed to be able to teach. P preaching is for proclaiming the word. Teaching is for explaining the word so that you can walk in it, live it, apply it to yourself, but not to entertain you, not to make you feel good. So he said he gave these gifts for the equipping of the saints. If I don't teach you this, you'll be ill-equipped. You won't have the right equipment for your fight. You won't have the right equipment to deal with life. If I just made you feel good and entertained you, you know, you, you left out here good, good thoughts of me, but if I challenge you, which I'm going to do and I want to do, I want to equip you so that you can fight. See, when you go through training as a, as a boxer, wrestler, MMA, and you, if you're in the military, they take the folk through what they call basic training. They teach them about firearms, they teach them about uh, strategies in the battle, they teach them how to work their weapons, how to do certain things, and it's called basic training. Because when you get in the battlefield, what you want is your training to take over. You don't really want to think about what I, I should do. You know, your training takes over. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, I want your training to take over. God wants your training to take over. You've been to basic training, and when the fight starts, you know what to do. Spiritually instinctive. Spiritually instinctive. I want you, want you equipped. I want you equipped. God wants you equipped. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hold your weapons up. And let's make this confession of faith. Say the word of God, word of God. is the most vital information the in the earth realm the earth. to me. The word of God can solve any problem in this life. The Holy Spirit uses the word of God to renew my mind so I can control this body and that changes my life. The best habits for success is a faith regimen that includes prayer, praise, and meditation on the Word of God today and all this week. I will walk, I will live in these covenant promises, and they are at work for me. They're working for me, changing rules, regulations, and moving around resources in order to enforce the covenant promises of my God. I believe this. I now receive it. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen and amen. Turn with me please to Acts chapter 17. The book of Acts chapter 17. Oh, we're going to have an awesome time. We're going to learn. We're going to get reminded of this awesome word. And we're going to grow. And we're going to stop just reading without pausing and learning. I want to read this to you also in the message. Acts 17, verse number 11. All 
Are you there? Now let me read the backdrop to you. I'm, you stay at 17, and I'm going to read. Well, let's, let's read verse 17 in the, in the, I got New King James. Let's read verse 17 yet. First, let's read that first. Okay, Acts 17, verse 11, it says, These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received, say they received. They received, they received the word with all readiness and searched, say search. They searched the scriptures daily, say daily, daily, to find out whether these things were so. What the apostle Paul was teaching, these people here in Berea, they took the scriptures and they searched them, how often? Daily. Most believers get into this on Sunday. Most believers get into this on Sunday and they're through with it for the week. But, but these people here, they search the scriptures, how often? If you really want to get this, you're going to have to do this and live this, how often? Daily. You know, I came that you might have life. Well, we live daily. You don't just live on Sunday. So I need this on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday because I'm living. So they, they, when Paul, the message Paul taught them, they want to make sure Paul knew what he was talking about. They want to make sure that Paul was on point, that it was scriptural, so they searched it daily. Now listen to this in the message. This is the backdrop. They took the road through Annapolis, in Apollonia. Y'all know uh, Prince's old girlfriend. In Apollonia. <laughs> Did y'all know that was in the Bible? Hmm? Yeah, for real. Right there it is, Acts 17 and 1. It, to Thessalonica, where there was a community of Jews. Paul went to their meeting place, as he usually did when he came to town. And for three Sabbaths, three Saturdays, three Sabbaths, running, he preached to them from the scriptures. He opened up the text so that they understood what they had been reading all their lives. Say all their lives. All their lives. Now, the folk, you know, these, these were Jewish people. They were in Judaism. They lived this thing. They, they, this, was their, this was their day. This was their life. And they had been reading something all their lives, but they had not understood what they have been reading all their lives. Believers have been reading this all their lives and do not understand what they've been reading all their lives. And that's a shame. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. He opened the text so that they understood what they've been reading all their lives, that the Mashiach, the Messiah, absolutely had to be put to death and raised from the dead, and there was no other options in that Yeshua, and that is the Yeshua I'm introducing to you, the Messiah. Now verse 17 in my message. It says, They sent to Berea, where they again met with the Jewish community, they were treated a lot better than in Thessalonica. The Jews received Paul's message with enthusiasm and met with him daily, examining the scriptures to see if what they supported by what he said. And a lot of them became believers, including many Greeks who were prominent in the community, both men and women of influence. The whole point being, I got to get in this daily. I got to get in this daily if I want to be able to understand it and live it. It cannot be casual. Else you won't get it. It, it. You won't get it. It won't have the impact on your life that it's supposed to. Just like if you worked out one day a week. If you ate healthy, one day a week. If you stayed in peace, one day a week. You had joy, one day a week. That's not going to impact your life. You acted right, one day a week. Go to day Tuesday, act right on Tuesdays. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all bets is off. <laughs> it's what you do daily that impacts your life. Do I pray daily? Do I worship daily? Do I walk in love daily? That's what impacts your life. Not casually, not once in a while, not when I feel like it. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 15, please. For us, this is supposed to be a daily thing. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 15. It says, be diligent. That means consistent. That means the same. Be diligent to present yourself approved to Yahweh, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Say the word of truth. The word of truth. Now, I got to search this daily, study it daily, 
if I want to be able to present myself to God, a worker that's not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the thing about truth is it never changes. Truth never changes. Truth don't care how I feel about it. See, 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 truth is that a man has a penis and a woman has a vagina. That truth ain't going to never change. And just because society and culture comes up with something else, some other definition, some other words, that don't change the truth. I've been reading articles lately that people are to let their kids wait till they get five, six, seven years old before they decide if they are a boy or a girl. When penises and vaginas already established that, it's some mental, some, some mental exercises that come into all the rest of this other stuff. And see, that sounds hateful to some people, that sounds rude to some people, that sounds hurtful to some people, that sounds estranged to some people, but it's the truth. You can't change the truth. And the truth don't care how I feel about it. The truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just because somebody come up with something else, it don't change the truth. Watch this. I don't like broccoli. Well, pastor, you ain't tasting fried. I don't like broccoli. You ain't tasting sauteed. I don't like broccoli. You ain't tasting with, I don't want broccoli. That's the truth. My taste buds don't like that. And you doing something different to it ain't going to change my taste buds. The truth is the same. It don't change. The, the truth will stand by silently and let you accept it or reject it. It, it takes up wings and it flies away. It won't argue. It won't debate because it stands on its own. Tr truth, don't, truth don't need any help. Truth don't need any agreement. And so I've got to rightly divide this word of truth, which means that you could do it in the wrong way as well. Now, I'm going to be diligent to, my, to present myself to God approved to him. See, if you're if you a, a, a believer that's mature, if you're a, a believer that's well taught, well, well learned, well, well versed with God, and you know you walk with God, and you know, and you know him, and he knows you, See, some people know God, but God don't know them, you know, because um, he said, many going to say to me in that day, many are going to say to me in that day, didn't I do this and that in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, you do of iniquity. I never knew you. Somebody did a sinner's prayer. Somebody read some scriptures. Somebody quote some scriptures. And the father will say, I didn't know you. See, I, I did the sinner's prayer. So what? Is it, was there a transformation in your life? Is there transformation in your life? I'm going to say, I never knew you. So people say they know God, but it's going to come a day when he's going to tell people, I don't know you. He's going to come a day when he's going to take sheep and separate them from goats. And guess what? Some of the goats thought they were sheep. Some of the goats thought they were sheep. And the father says, you've been a goat all this time to me. My sheep know my voice. And the voice of the news channel, the voice of the politicians, the voice of their culture, they will not follow. If I know his voice, it don't matter what somebody else is saying. I'm, I want to be approved by him. See, you are mortal. There's an expiration date on you. I, I love you, but you ain't going to influence my walk with God. He's called the Ancient of Days, the Most High. Your name is Willie, and you're, only, you're limited in your knowledge and experience. There's an expiration date on all of us. And I'm going to listen to another human. As far as my stand with God, I want to be approved by him. A lot of folk is so weak. A lot of folk is so insecure. See, if I was weak and insecure, I wouldn't touch this subject. If I was weak and insecure, I wouldn't say nothing about lesbian, homosexual, and gay stuff. If I was weak and insecure. But I want to, I want to make sure that I'm approved to him. And everything I do, I want to make sure I do it with love as a motive. Love is the motive. I'm not telling you that gay and homosexuality stuff is against the things of God. I'm not telling you that to hurt you or I hate you. I'm saying it to be approved by him. Because he made Adam and he made Eve. He made them male and female for a reason. And just because people come up with something else, that does not change the truth. Just because you put on man clothes you, and, you gotta, and you're using a, a, you're on your administration. Men don't have administrations. 
Men don't have periods. You put on makeup and heels and you got a penis. You still can't get pregnant. Because females get pregnant. But the world will talk you into some stuff that they ain't came up with and you're supposed to accept that as truth because you, you want to be accepted. Do you want to be accepted by the world or you want to be approved by him? Because ain't nobody going to stand with you. Oh, Lord, Lord, can I get back to my thing, God? Because ain't nobody going to stand with me. Ain't nobody going to stand with you before him. He ain't going to ask me about any. He's going to ask me about me. He's going to ask you about you. He's not going to ask you about anybody else. We must all stand before the judgment seat of Yeshua to give an account for the things that we did while we was in this body. I'm going to let this rotten flesh control my life. <laughs> to be absent from the body, to be present with the Most High. This thing here is going to be on the earth realm, decaying in a casket or whatever they, whatever they do to it. And now my spirit man will be standing before the Lord, giving an account as to what it did while it was stuck in this stuff. And this stuff ain't going to be nowhere around. So you're on your own now. Truth. Turn to Philippians chapter 3, please. Whew. I'm glad the Holy Spirit got that out. <laughs> that wasn't in my notes. Oh, my God. Love, say love. We love people. God loves people. God hates sin. He hates sin. He loves people. We're not against anybody. I'm not against anybody. I, I'm not going to. I used to work in the prison. I used to have boys' homes in San Bernardino. I, I used to deal with, with uh, young people involved in gang activity, involved in drive-by shootings. One time, one of my boys in my boys' home went on a home pass, and they did a drive-by shooting with their friends. And one of the friends, they shooting out the car, and they shot their own friend in the car. And, and I, so I was against all that ignorance, all that killing. I was against all the you know, selling drugs. I was against all that. I, you know, I couldn't condone it and pat him on the head or pat him on the back. Say, well, that's all right. You grew up in the hood, and you ain't got no mama and daddy. You're going to be all right. No, I had to teach them and train them against that way of thinking and living. Now, Philippians chapter 3, verse number 3, the Apostle Paul, he says, For we are the circumcision who worship Yahweh in the Ruach or in the Spirit. He says, Rejoice in Yeshua HaMashiach, are you there? And have no confidence in the flesh. Say, No confidence in my flesh. Say, No confidence in my lower nature. Now, now Paul says, Though I also might have some confidence in my flesh, if anybody think they ought to, Paul says, I should, and he tells you why. Verse 5. He says, I was circumcised on the eighth day. Say Judaism. He says, I was the star of the stock of Israel. I was from the tribe of Benjamin. I was a Hebrew among the Hebrews. Concerning the law, I was a Pharisee, which meant I was doing all of it. I was doing all the law. Now, concerning zeal, verse 6, I persecuted the church. Concerning the righteousness, which is of the law, I was blameless. Paul says, but what things that were gained to me, I now count them lost for Christ. Look at Pastor. Now, this is Rabbi Shaul, the Apostle Paul, better known in English. And he was given his resume about who he was, about his background, about where he came from. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I was a Hebrew among the Hebrews. I was an Israelite. Concerning the Torah, the law, I knew it all, I did it all. He says, but when it came to meeting Yeshua, everything that I had from the flesh. Now see, watch, he was likening his religion, his religious ideas to, it wasn't, wasn't no good, didn't have no value to it. Just like my flesh don't. I couldn't brag about the things I did, circumcised flesh, Israelite flesh. I could brag about all that, but when I met Christ, all that stuff that I thought was something, my PhD in Judaism, garbage. But he gave his resume. People love and respect Apostle Paul. You know, the, the church today, most folk quote Paul more than they quote Yeshua. Most folk will tell you something Paul said by the Spirit than what Jesus said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Most folk will quote that. The Apostle Paul, he's awesome, man. He's a heavy hitter. 
He's at the top of the list for most churches. Let's look at something we looked at last week. Go to Acts 21. Go to Acts 21. This this Paul we just read about. If you were here last week or saw last week on YouTube or Facebook, you remember this. But I wanted to put it out there with you know, Paul. Now, let me give you some backdrop real quick. Acts 21. Now, Paul here was preaching Christ. Okay, he was preaching Christ to some Jews again. And he got in trouble. They didn't like his message. They wanted to kill him. Look at verse 30. And all the people were disturbed, and the people ran together to seize Paul. They dragged him out of the church. And immediately the doors were shut. Now, as they were seeking to kill him, say kill him. him. Say church folk folk. wanted to kill kill. the pastor. pastor. (laughs) So church folk getting mad at the pastor ain't nothing new. We ought to be able to handle it. We ought to be able to deal with it. That's just how sheep are. They want cake and ice cream. Man, pastor serving broccoli today. I had a sweet tooth. And they wanted to kill Paul for preaching Christ. Verse 13, now as they were seeking to kill him, that's so funny. Church came out. News came. They, had to, they called the police, y'all. They called the National Guard. Really, they called a garrison. Verse 31, I said 13. I'm sorry. Verse 31, now as they were seeking to kill him, news came to the commander of the garrison that all of Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately took soldiers and centurions, the National Guard, and they ran down to them. And when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. God shall send him some help. (laughs) Then the commander came near and took him and commanded him, y'all put chains on Paul, lock him up, he under arrest, and they asked what he had done. And some of the multitude cried out one thing and some another. Now, drop down to verse 37. Then as Paul, say Apostle Paul, Paul. say the great Paul, that everybody quote, that everybody love. Then as Paul was about to be led into the barracks, he said to the commander, may I speak to you? He, the commander, replied, can you speak Greek? Now why was the commander shocked at that and asked him that question if he looked like a Greek? If he looked, now I know people know different languages, different nationalities, all that. But if, but if Paul had some other features and another look about him that would surprise this man by him asking him these questions in Greek and the Roman soldiers say, you speak Greek? Why would that shock him? And verse 38, are you not the what, y'all? The what? The what? Egyptians are the sons of who? Ham. Egypt means Mitzurim in Hebrew, the land of the burnt faces, the land of the blacks. And this soldier thought Paul was an Egyptian. The significance of that is everybody loves Paul, follow Paul, quote Paul. Now, everybody thought Paul was a white man, a European type guy. Now, you find out he's an Egyptian-looking man, are you still ready to quote him like you used to? Does Paul still hold the same weight with you that he held with you before you read a scripture like that? Now, I've read that so many times, but I just kept going. I just kept it pushing. Ah, I don't want to think about that too hard. Something weird there, but I'm just leaving it alone because ain't nobody else said nothing about it. But I had to study to show myself approved unto him a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly. De- I would not be teaching these things and saying these things if I had not rightly divided the truth, word of truth. I would not be presenting this if I have not studied and show myself approved. I couldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Shouldn't do it. So everybody has been following Paul, quoting Paul, and you thought he was European, and you find out he black. Why did God put that in there? Why did the Holy Spirit put that in there? if it had no significance.
Paul, mistaken for an Egyptian. The apostle Paul that wrote two, he wrote two thirds of the Bible, man. The great apostle Paul, is he still great to you? You find out he looked like an Egyptian? You still ready to quote him? You still ready to follow him? You think when you find out he looked like an Egyptian? Turn to Psalm 78, please. Don't y'all get quiet on me now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But hey, you guys, why can't we look at the truth? Amen. Amen. The, the only reason, the only purpose I'm doing this, I have no hate in my heart, no animosity in my heart. I'm not an angry black man. My life is blessed. I love everybody. I, I'm not doing this for no ulterior motive. I'm not doing this to, for no black supremacy or no black power or none of that stuff. I'm doing it simply for the truth. Why can't we look at this stuff through the correct eyes, with the correct words, when you find out what the words mean, where they came from, what the, what the definition are, why can't we present it? Why can't we present this truth? We've presented the blood, we've presented prayers, we've presented worship, we've presented the Holy Spirit, we've presented tongues, we've presented tithes, we've presented offerings, we've presented fasting, we've presented all this stuff over and over and over again. Wonderful. Why can't we present this truth? Why is this truth so taboo? Why is this truth so Oh, that'll make me feel comfortable. Well, get over it and grow up. Why would this make you, why would the truth ever make you uncomfortable? Satan is the one that makes you uncomfortable with the truth so he can keep you in bondage. As soon as the body of Christ recognizes this stuff and acknowledges this stuff, we're going to get free and the most high can use it like he wants to. Right now we're divided. White folks are at their white church. Black folks are at their black church. But a lot of black people will go to the white church and sit up on their white pastor. But white folk come and sit up on their black pastor. Nah. Can't lower themselves to do that. And you know that's the truth. Whereas black people have been taught to sit at the feet of white people. They know. They're smarter. They'll submit to them because you're used to submitting to them. White folk ain't sub used to submitting to nobody black. The truth. And the body of Christ needs to come together and get over that. You know, the, the great apostle Frederick K.C. Price, world-renowned, world national television in the 70s, on prime time on Sunday morning in Los Angeles, $55,000 an hour is what his show cost to put on in the 70s. At church, we, we went, Frost and I went there for eight years. That church was all black people. We had like, maybe had five or six white people come. But he was respected and well known, blah, 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 blah. But coming and sitting down, mm -mm, we ain't doing that. Why? Why? I would go to Kenneth Copeland's meetings. I would go to Jesse Duplantis meetings. I would go to Melvin Hickey, Hickey, I would go to uh, Kenneth Hagen meetings. All those people would come to town and go to, they'd be somewhere local. I'd go see him, go, go to that stuff and, and sit there and hear the word. All I cared about was the word. Um, Dr. Price would go places and, and we would follow him and go there. All black people. All black people. Majority. I'll just, you know, a handful of other colors, but you know what I'm saying. And you know it's the truth on top of that. Why? Why? What's the problem? What's the problem? Do our, do our white brothers and sisters need to search their hearts and see what's in there so we can all come together finally? Nobody's superior. Nobody's inferior. Yeah. As soon as black people get over being inferior, then they'll come up to the place where God has them. Oh, oh Lord. Turn to Exodus chap chapter 3. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, I will. Yes, I will, Holy Spirit. Exodus. Okay, go to chapter 1 first. It's right after Genesis. You don't need to go to the concordance on that one. Study to show yourself approved. And don't get mad at me. Exodus chapter 1. Are you there? Now these are the names. Say names. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, not the Jews, who came to Mitzurim, Egypt, each man and his household came with Jacob, better known as Israel, Reuben, these are the tribes they're naming, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. That's us. 
That's black folk that came from Africa over here. Issachar, Zubalim, and the rest of them. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Drop down to verse number eight. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Because, you know, Joseph was second in command of Pharaoh. And he said to his people, look at the people of the children of Israel. Say children of Israel. Not Jews. Okay. Who are more mightier than we are. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. At least they multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also will join our armies and fight against us and also go up to another land. Look at verse number 13. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel. Say children of Israel. Say not Jews. Look at verse 15. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives of whom his name, her name was Sapphira and the name of Pua. And he said, when, when you see your duties as a midwife of the Hebrew women and when you see them on the birch stool, if it's a son, you shall kill him. But if it's a daughter, you can let her live. Now go to chapter 3. I want you to see the children of Israel, not those, not no Jews. Let's see, let's see. Look at verse 7. Exodus 3, 7. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry and because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up from that land to a good and large land that flow with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites. Say Canaanites. Canaanites. Say sons of Ham. Sons of Ham. Say the burnt, faces. the burnt faces. Drop down to verse number 13. Then Moses said to Yahweh, Indeed, when I come to the Children of Israel, say a nation, a nation. say not a, race. not a race. When I come to the children of Israel and say to them that Yahweh of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, well, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And Yahweh said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am have sent you. Sent me to you. Well, you know, read the rest of it for yourself. <laughs> you can read. <laughs> Try, if you can, to get that Jew thought out of your head. To think that Jew is a race of people. Because when you, uh, uh, can I have the picture up, please? Because when you look over to Israel today, present day Israel, and you see those European looking people, and you say, those must be the people that were there during biblical times. And those are not the people that were there during biblical times. So in our minds, we see that. We see those people. We see Israel. And then we see pictures like, hello. When we see pictures like that, that's burned in our brains, we think that that's who he's talking about. And it's not, it cannot be, this dude painted that picture in 1940. That picture's gone all over the world. It's the most no noted, the most, has been sold the most out of any other paintings in the whole wide world. And that's burning our brains. And we think he looks like that. Now, if he looked like that, cool, because I got saved thinking he looked like that. And I had no problem with it because my motive was to get born again, to get out of sin. I didn't care what he looked like. But now that I've searched the scriptures daily... And I see where he came from and what his lineage and genealogy is. I know he don't look like that. So those that thought he looked like that and you find out he don't, now how you feel? Can, can you accept him and you find out he don't look like that? Do you want to be saved? You want to be born again? If he don't look like that? I did. I didn't care. So if color don't matter, it shouldn't matter what color he was. But let's find out what color he was. Now, the Bible says... God said, don't make any graven images of me. So I ain't made no image of him. Other folk did. It's there. And that stuff been burned in our brains, and we think that's how he looked. And so here we are again, second-class citizens in America, and now we're second-class citizens to God. And that hurts my faith. That hurts my confidence towards him. And don't tell me color don't matter. 
because he got so much color in here. Everything happening here in the Old Testament, all this stuff happened in what they call the land of Cush, the land of Ham. Turn back to Psalms 78. Color matter because God made us color. Everybody. Don't be talking about it don't matter now when you find out it's your script. You know, you know we didn't flip the script and now color don't matter. You know, He's been, he been looking like that. Hey, leave the picture up there, please. He's been looking like that all this time to us, and I accepted it. Why can't you if he don't look like that? So, so now all of a sudden color don't matter. What's the big deal about color? You know what the big deal is about color. I don't see color. Well, you need to get your, your eyes fixed. Get some glasses. Because we're all important in the way he made us and who we are. And you know, don't downplay none of it. Psalm 78, are you there? Look at verse 43, please. Psalm 78, verse 43. When he worked his miracles in Egypt, and his wonders in the field of Zoan. Say field of Zoan. Field of Zoan. Now the field of Zoan is pronounced in the Hebrew Tosan. It was a city in the eastern region of Egypt by the Nile Delta. Archaeologists digs have found monuments dedicated to Joseph and Jacob. So that means that these black Israelites were in this region in Egypt. They found monuments about them in these lands. So that's what we're talking about. Now, this is the account of, of, of God uh, busting up Pharaoh's program. He turned the rivers into blood and their streams that they could not drink. He sent swarms of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He also gave their crops to caterpillars and their labor to the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He also gave up their cattle to hell and their flocks of fiery lightning. He cast them into the fire, fierceness of his anger. He cast on them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending angels of destruction among them. He made a path for his anger. He did not spare the, their soul from death. He gave their life over to the plague and destroyed all the firstborn in Egypt. The first of their strength in the, I know your, your translation says tense, a better translation would be land or tabernacle. The first of their strength in the land of Ham. Say land of Ham. Land of Ham. Now we know who Ham is, don't we? Moses' four sons, um, Japheth, Ham, Shem, or three sons, Japheth, Ham, and Shem. So Ham means burnt, you know, in the sense that if you put, keep fire on something until it turns black, it burns. And that's what Ham name means. That's what Noah named his son. So all this stuff happened in the land of Ham. Turn to Psalms 105. And we're saying all this stuff for a reason. We shall see. Look at Psalms 105. Look at verse 23. Psalms 105, verse 23. See, now to me, I'm talking slow. To y'all, I guess I ain't talking slow. <laughs> to me, I'm talking slow. Anyway, Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob dwelt in the land of Ham. Say the land of Ham. Land of Ham. Say Jacob, Jacob, one of the patriarchs, of the patriarchs lived, lived in the land, in the land of, Ham. of Ham. Now let Pastor tell you this. The land of Ham encompasses the whole continent of Africa and the Middle East. The land of Ham encompasses the whole continent of Africa and the Middle East where all this activity took place. Now you look over there in them regions and you see what color them people are now. You're telling me they was white then? But when I would read this and read stuff like this, in my head, in my mind, I'm thinking it's all white people. Now check this out. Listen to the question. If you thought when you would read the scriptures if it passed through your mind and your psyche and your imagination, when you would read about these people in the Bible, would you think, raise your hand, if you, would, if you were thinking when you would read this, were you thinking that it was black people they were talking about? Raise your hand if you thought that when you read it. Same thing happened at 9 o'clock. When I would read this, even something about Ethiopia, something about Egypt, I still thought they were talking about white people. Why? Why? Why 
when I read about Egypt and Ethiopia and think they're talking about white people. I hear the land of Ham and I think they're talking about white people. Why? The way it was presented, the way it was taught, the way it was explained, and nothing else was never ever said by the white pastors or the black ones. Because the black ones, been, the black ones, been not saying nothing. The people may, may not like it, or may think you something wrong with you, or think you off, or think you're trying to start trouble, or think you mad or something, instead of just the truth. My wife said maybe they was thinking like us. You know, hey, they tell my wife up. And not against anybody, not mad at anybody. Let's just get the truth out there, what the scripture says, what they're talking about, who they're talking about. So we can just have that information and knowledge. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Israel came, verse 23, into Egypt, and Jacob dwelt in the land of Ham, in the land of Ham, in the black country. He increased his people greatly in the black country and made them stronger than their enemies in the black country. He turned their heart to hate the people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his miracles among them and wonders in the land of Ham. All black people involved in this. Now, is Pastor saying the, the Old Testament was all just black people only? No, I'm not saying that. No, I'm not inferring that. But no, I'm not going to deal with it because it's been dealt with anyway. Unspoken, untaught, inferred, whatever. All these black people in here thought they was always reading about white people. How that happened? How that happened? Stuff like that, movies, media, cartoons, Bible stories for the kids, they're all white people. So our little black kids think, well, shoot, we ain't in nothing. We ain't got, you know, and that passed on generation, 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 and that keep going on. The only thing wrong with it, it ain't the truth. Psalms 106, please. Look at verse number 19. They made a calf in whore and worshiped the molding image. 106.19. Thus, they changed the glory into the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot Yahweh, they, their Savior. Say they forgot. they forgot. See, watch this, y'all. Moses was up on the mountain 40 days, 40 nights, fellowshipping with God, getting the Ten Commandments under the anointing. Didn't eat nothing for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses. The children of Israel, down there waiting for him to come back. It was taking too long. So what did they do? They forgot Yahweh. See, once you get separated from the things of God for a certain period of time, it's going to be easy for you to stray away, go back to thinking the way you were thinking, acting the way you are acting, living the way you are living. People that have strayed away from here because of something called COVID, uh, quoting scripture, shouting, praising God, praying, talking all this stuff. And then when the fire came up and the, when the enemy turned the fire up high on the furnace, they melted away. Even when the government gave, and I ain't just talking about my church, I talked to other pastors, the government gave folk permission to go to church. They gave you permission to go back to church. And people still are afraid to go, even with permission. And I'm not trying to down them or whatever, but people need to wake up and take a look at themselves. Why? What's going on? What happened to you? Like the Apostle Paul said to the Galatians, oh foolish Galatians, what happened to you? They forgot. Look at verse 21. Say it's possible to forget the goodness of God. Now look, y'all, look. These folks was in slavery to the Egyptians. They was killing their sons. They, 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 were, they were mistreating them. And Yahweh performed a miracle and got them out of there. Part of the Red Sea was a miracle. Gave them manna from heaven with a miracle. Got water out of a flint rock. A miracle. Quail came down. You don't know how expensive quail is? You know why there ain't no quail in your store? Because you're going to the wrong store. <laughs> so why? Yahweh did all that stuff and they forgot. Miracles do not keep you in the presence of God. <clears throat> oh, I felt this anointing. Watch this. Miracles don't keep you in the presence of God. 
You got to keep yourself in the presence of God. He's done some miracles in your life. He's done some miraculous, wondrous things, unexplainable things in all our lives. And what's keeping us in his presence in us is us. You didn't forget about that. You didn't forget about what God did. How tight things was. How hard things was. How crazy things were. How dangerous things were. You didn't forget about that. When you were in that moment, he was the most important thing. And now another moment shows up and you forgot about your Savior. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he got me and delivered me from that, he's going to deliver me from this. But you forgot. They forgot their Savior. Now wait a minute. You was a slave, a Hebrew slave, working like a Hebrew slave from sun up to sundown. And Yahweh sent a man named Moses, a, a murderer, who had a warrant out for his arrest. He hiding out in the backside of the desert. And Yahweh talks to him and persuades him to come in, and he want to use him. Moses get a court with Pharaoh, the king. Let my people go. Yahweh says, let his people go. So after all this stuff, he let them go. Hey, y'all, y'all free. This is the Passover. Take some blood of a lamb, put it over the doorpost of your life, of your house, and when the deaf angel passes by, he's going to pass over your house. The deaf angel showed up and looked in their house, and he saw Yahweh at the dinner table, and the deaf angel had to keep going. They forgot about that. They was broke. They didn't have no credit. And they one of them, they had no credit scores. But when they left, it said they left with all the silver and the gold and the good raiment of the Egyptians. They forgot about that. And if you stray away, if you lay away, if you stay away, you will forget. You have forgotten. You will forget that Yahweh has saved you and delivered you from other stuff. But somehow, some reason, he can't deliver me from this. Somehow, some way, this is stronger than him, worse than what he could do. This is beyond the reach and beyond the grasp of the Most High because the news told me that, because the government told me that, because science told me that. And all that stuff may be true, but it does not nullify or stop his ability to deliver me. God, 2020 made some people forget. Oh, he saved my house. Oh, he saved my son. Oh, he got me a car. Oh, he got me a job. I got a promotion. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Ooh, uh, all the blessings. And then danger shows up, and I forgot. Death shows up, and I forgot. This ain't essential because they told me it's not essential for me to go there. The government, the God of this world told believers that this is not essential for them to do. And they have no clue or no idea that they bowed to the knee of Baal. Who told you that this was not essential? The God of this world told you that. God, you're telling me Yah Yahweh told you do not forsake the assembly yourselves together and he changed because of COVID? Am I telling you not to social distance? Am I telling you not to put a mask on? No, I ain't telling you not, not none of that stuff. Am I telling you not to wash your hands? You should have been doing that anyway. <laughs> and, and now... And now I have forgot that he has saved me from a whole bunch of other stuff. Because the God of this world told me it ain't essential for me to assemble anymore. But God loves you and everybody, and I love, and I ain't talking about just our church. I'm talking about the other ones, all the other ones I talked to other pastors. It's sad, it's ridiculous, it's mind-blowing, mind-boggling. Folk quoting scripture, or they'll quote your scripture. But see, it's the doers of the word, not the quoters. Satan quotes scripture to Jesus at the, at the mountain. Hey, you know, ain't you the, the, he'll give his angels charge over you. Well, uh, keep you in, uh, your foot won't dash the stone. Some of say, Satan was trying to throw the scripture out there. He quoting scripture. So quoting scripture doesn't make you a doer. 
You ever heard people, I'm losing 20 pounds, I'm going to the gym, I'm losing weight. And you see them next time and they're bigger. You know, just, just saying you're going to do something. Saying? Doing. Doing. They forgot Yahweh, their Savior, who had done wondrous things in Egypt. Verse 22, this is where I'm supposed to just say this. Wondrous works in the land, say in the land, in the land of Ham. So we're in a black country, black nation, but the people white. It's embarrassing how stupid we've been. Wonders works in the land of Ham, awesome things at the Red Sea. And when you look at those movies on TV, all them folk crossing that Red Sea is white folks. In the land of Ham. Now, now peep this out. Okay, Pharaoh and Egyptian, they all black. And all their slaves is white. <laughs> the children of Israel, all their slaves is white. Let the see television, movies, all that stuff. It gives you a vision. It tells you a vision for you to have, and we have that vision in us when we read this. We're reading this with the vision that we got from the world. Yes. You know, you can stay in here and cry, <laughs> talk, whatever you're doing. Turn to Psalms 120. Big Daddy almost threw anyway. So turn to Psalm 120. He probably saying, amen, y'all just can't interpret it. Zeno saying, amen. Psalms 120, verse 1. In my distress, say in my distress. Say he didn't promise I wouldn't have any distress. So I don't get mad when stuff happens. I don't get discouraged. I don't get depressed. Because we are in the earth where there is distress. So David said, in my distress, I cried out to Yahweh. In your distress, just go ahead and cry out. He says, and he heard me. See, my job is to cry out to him. His job is to hear me. Verse 3, and he delivered my soul. See, spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is your whole spirit man. This absence from the body is the physical body die. Your body is the flesh man. Your soul is your mental psychic ca ca capacity. So your, your mental health. When Jesus said, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest for your soul. He's talking about mental health. David said he delivered my soul from lying lips. See, people lie on you. People, people lied on me. People have lied on me about COVID. Lied on me. Lied about me. Lied. Told lies. Now, see, when people lie on you and talk about you, you should count it as an honor because they lied on Yeshua and talked about him. Anyway, I digress. Watch this. See, when, when people say things and do things to you, about you, you know, it, it gets in your head. It can get in your head. And so people were lying on David, lying lips about him, and he said, I called on, cried out to the Lord, he heard me, and he delivered my soul from their lying lips. The lies that were told about you. The things, the untrue things that were said about you. The things that you didn't do. The things that you didn't say. Say, so he will deliver my mind and give me peace from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. So let them lie on you. Let them say stuff about you. Just love the hell right out of them. What shall be given to you or what shall be done to you, you false tongue, sharp arrows of the warrior with coals of the broom tree? Woe is me that I dwell in Mishai, that I dwell among the tents of Kedar. Say the tents of Kedar. Tents of Kedar. That word Kedar comes from the people who were Kedarites and it means they were dark skinned people. This is King David, Melech David, the one who God says a man after my own heart the one that slew Goliath, that David, he says, I am in the house or the land where the Kadars are, where these dark-skinned people are. Well, he was dark-skinned his own self. We, we saw the paintings of David that they found, you know, that was centuries old. His son Solomon says, I am black. So if Solomon was black, that means David probably was black. 
So all this black activity, all these dark-skinned black people, and when I read this, all I do is think about white people. See, when the Bible talked about, ooh, <laughs> look at this. Look what the Holy Spirit just said. See, when the Bible talked about us getting our mind renewed, we always equate that with some sin. Stop sinning. Stop cussing. Stop drinking. Get my mind renewed. Stop worrying. Stop having fear. How about getting your mind renewed to the, to the truth? I need my mind renewed that everybody I read in here ain't white. Just for the truth purposes. That's an amen. I'm going to stop on that. I'm thinking.